Today I'm going to be showing you how to set a custom cursor in Unity. So right now you can see that I have a different cursor from the normal one. And then if I click, then it changes to this kind of pointer. And you can, of course, import whichever image you want to use for this. And then in the next video, I'll be showing you how to actually click items. So right now you can click the coins and they will be destroyed. So these are the assets that I use. Right now I'm using Kenny's Game Icons Expansion. It is free to use and you can see they have some mouse ones up here, but I'm currently using the pointer one and the mouse one. And then I'm also using this Forest Low Poly Toon Battle Arena for the environment as well as this customized skybox. And these links are in the description. So once you download Kenny's asset or you have your own cursor, in this case, I'll show you how to get to the Kenny's asset one. You go to PNG, then white, and then I'm going to select 2x, which is just the size of the image. So in here, you can just control A to select all of them to see the images. And the one we want is the cursor and the pointer. You can also use the mouse ones if you want. So I'm just going to select the cursor and then control pointer to select both of them. And I'm just going to drag those two onto my Unity project. And so once we have these two images here, we can select both of them. And this is really important, but we have to make sure to set our texture type to cursor and hit apply. And we don't need to change any other setting, but it's really important that we set it to cursor or else we can't set the cursor of Unity with their method. We would have to do it manually, which is kind of a pain. All right, so now once we have these images, let's make a script so we can set our cursor. So you can just go to your scripts folder and right click create C sharp script and let's call it cursor controller. All right. And let's just double click that. All right. And now that we have our cursor controller here, let's import our cursor that we just made. So we can say public texture 2d, which is the cursor that we just made. It changes it into a texture 2d if it isn't one already. And then we can just say cursor. And we can just set one for later called texture 2D and we can say cursor clicked. So this is the one that we want to change whenever we click it. So to make this simpler for us, let's make a function called change cursor. And in here we can pass in the cursor that we want to change. So in this case, we can pass in a texture 2D and then cursor type. And then we can just say cursor dot set cursor. So this is a unity function that we can use. And then we can pass in the texture 2D that we want. So in this case, we can just pass in the cursor type. All right. And so now that we set the texture 2D, it asks us for a hotspot. So a vector to hotspot. And that's basically where we want our events to be triggered from. So currently the default is the top left. So you can see right now I have my mouse moving around and it's an arrow key. So it checks the top left of that cursor to see what I'm clicking on in that position. But if you wanted to, you can change it to the middle of the cursor instead, just in case you didn't have a pointing cursor. And you can do that easily. You would do that by this. So you can say vector to hotspot and then you can get your cursor type width and height. So you can say new vector two, and then you can say cursor type dot width, and you can divide that by two. And then you can say cursor type dot height divided by two. And you can pass in that hotspot into your set cursor right here. So that means now it will check the middle of the cursor instead of the top left. And finally, our last parameter is our cursor mode. So this is just how it decides how it renders the cursor. So in this case, we can just say cursor mode dot auto. So if it's supported on your hardware, it will render your cursor through your hardware. But if it's not supported, then it will try to render it through software. In this case, I'm not going to be using a hotspot. So I can just put a vector 2 dot zero here. All right. And then in our awake function, we can just say change cursor and we can pass in the cursor that we want to change it to. And then something else you can do is that you can confine your cursor to your game screen so that your cursor doesn't go outside of your game screen. And you can do that by saying cursor dot lock state equals, and then you can say cursor lock mode dot. And then we have a couple here, confined, locked, or none. In this case, we want to do confined, so it's confined to our area. Locked means that it stays in the center of the screen at all times. And so I'm just going to erase this update function since we don't need it. And now you can just right click on your hierarchy and create an empty game object. And I'm just going to be calling it cursor. And then we can add in our cursor controller and then we can pass in our parameters. So we can click this little circle here and pass in our cursor and make sure this is a texture 2d or else it will not work. And then you can pass in your cursor clicked. Well, I'm just going to pass in this pointer for now, although we're not doing anything with it. 
And now you can see that when we press play, you can see that now our cursor has changed. Awesome. So now let's add in the new input system so that the cursor can change whenever we're pressing down with our mouse. So go to Window, Package Manager if you haven't already, and then go to Packages, Unity Registry, and make sure to search for Input System. And if you haven't installed it already, right down here on the bottom right, you can just click Install, and just click Yes with the pop-up, so it restarts your Unity Editor. All right, and then we have to make an input action for our cursor. So you can right click and create a new input action and we can call this cursor controls and this is where we will specify our controls. I have numerous videos on the input system and that will be in the description below if you're interested in learning more. So for our action map we can just say this is our mouse action map and then we can name this action click. Now that we named our action you can see in the action type we can just select button it's already selected for us luckily and then we can click this drop down here and under no binding we can select the path that we want so you can select the path here then click mouse and then you can click in this case I'm going to click the left button so it's as if you're clicking down normally. You can also add a bunch of other cursors for different actions. For example, you can add one for the middle button, for the right button, etc. One other thing we want to add is an interaction. So we can click this plus here and I'm just going to add in a press. And I'm going to select this press to be release only. So basically this action will only be triggered when I release the button. But the input system actually gives us a started callback. So we know whenever we press down on the button and now we will know whenever we have released the button because this action will be triggered or performed whenever we release the button. So I just save the asset and then we can click on our input action and generate a C-sharp class and click apply. And now we can use this script in our script. See it generated a cursor control script. All right, and then in our cursor controller, we can say private cursor controls, controls, and we have to initialize our new input system. So we can say controls equals new cursor controls. And then we have to also be sure to enable our controls on the on enable function. So we can say controls equal enable. And we also have to be sure to disable our controls. Controls dot disable. All right, now that we have initialized our controls, then in our start function, which I'm gonna move up here just for organization, and I'm gonna be sure to put private in front of it so it's all alike. Then in our private start method, we can assign functions that we wanna call whenever our callback has been performed. So in this case, we can say controls dot our action map, which in this case is mouse, and then our action, which is click. Remember we did this in the input system. And then we can select a callback, so you can put dot, and then there's one called started. So whenever we have started clicking, we don't want to pass anything to our function. So let's just make a function called private void started click. And let's make another one called private void ended click. So back to the start method, whenever we have started to click our mouse, then we want to call our started click function. And the reason we have this notation is because this is for events and we're just basically getting our parameter, which in this case, we don't want to pass in anything into our function. So I'm just going to put an underscore here. This function is called and you can actually pass in the parameter. So to give you an example, you can pass in the context and then you can say context dot read value if you wanted to read its value. And if this case you wanted to get a vector two out of it, that's how you would do it. But I have a whole video on this. So I'll link that in the description. And then we can say controls.mouse.click.perform. So whenever we finished performing our mouse click, then we can just call our ended click function. All right, and then in our started click function, we can say change cursor, and then we can pass in the cursor that we want to change it to. So in this case, when we start clicking, let's pass in the cursor clicked. And then when we end clicking, we want to pass in the other one. Change cursor, cursor. All right, and now it should work. All right, and now when we click play, you can see that you have a custom cursor and it changes now when you click. Pretty cool. So in the next video, I'll be showing you how to actually click on items and this will be using raycasts. And you can do this for either 2D games or 3D games. It works for both. I show you how to do it the both ways. And I also show you how to trigger functions when you click on an item. So for example, when I click on this coin, I can destroy this. And this is really useful for any kind of point and click game or maybe RTSs. 
And I will be showing you how to do that via interfaces, which is really cool and really useful. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to all my patrons and thank you to my new patron on the supporter tier. I appreciate all of your help. It really goes a long way to helping me make these videos. So thank you. If you're interested, I'll put the link in the description. I offer several benefits such as exclusive chat channel on Discord, source code for my video tutorials and early access. And if you're not in my Discord already, I recommend joining. It's in the description below. We're a pretty fun bunch. And if you need any help, you can ask in the help channel. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.